In this video, I will show you an automation I built that analyzes the latest videos of a list of YouTube channels, summarizes their titles, and generates a report that gives you a summary of the topics that are currently trending in your niche. Now, the solution starts off with a Google Sheet that contains the URLs of the YouTube channels that I want to analyze the videos of. Now, something important to note here is that the YouTube channels need to be in the same niche, right? Because the idea is that we want to find the, the common topics between the, um, the videos that each channel posts, right? So they need to be in the same niche. For example, here, all these channels are in the AI niche. That's the first part. You create a Google Sheet with all the URLs and there's not really a limit. You can have as many as you want here. Now, the next step is to actually extract the information of all these videos. And to do that, I'm using um, Phantom Buster, which is a web scraping uh, automation platform. They have a bunch of different web scrapers, but the one I'm using is the YouTube channel video extractor. Now, if I go here in my dashboard, uh, here it is. Here's the instance of that automation. And if I go to the setup page, you can see here that in the configuration, I'm providing the, the URL of my Google Sheet that contains the list of YouTube channels. So that's how the automation knows which channels I want to scrape the videos of. Then on the behavior tab here, I'm specifying how many videos I want to scrape from each channel. And you can see here that I'm saying I want to scrape the 10 and in the advanced settings, newest videos, right? So I want to be scraping the latest videos that they post. And from each channel, I want to scrape the last 10 videos. And then here is the number of channels that I want to scrape. I have this set to 10. Um, I only have four channels here, so it will basically uh, scrape all of them. But yeah, you can, sp if you have um, like 100, uh, a list of 100 channels, you can specify how many of those you want to scrape. And then in the launch settings, this is where I specify the schedule at which uh, this automation will be triggered. So currently I have this set to once, which means I'm gonna be triggering it manually. But what I could do is set it to be triggered automatically at a set time interval. So I could say that I want it to be uh, once every day, or I could go to the advanced settings and say that I want it to be um, every, let's say every Monday. You know, I can select only Monday here and it will get triggered every Monday. And then another important thing here in the advanced settings under file management, I have this set to delete previous files because every time the automation gets triggered, I want to delete all the previous videos that it has scraped, right? I want to start fresh each time. So I only, so, so my list, my results only contain um, the latest videos that I'm scraping from each channel, right? I don't want to be uh, combining uh, all the videos that I ever scraped from all the channels. So this is an important setting that I'm selecting here. So that's the setup of this automation. So we're now at this stage, scraping the video information. Now for each video, I'm actually scraping uh, the video title. So if we go here to the, um, there we go. So I'm scraping the video title I'm scraping the URL of the video, so the, the URL that takes you to the actual video page. I'm scraping the duration of the video. I'm scraping the view count. I'm scraping the pause date and the timestamp. And I think there's a few more things, but um, those, those are uh, some data points I'm definitely scraping. Uh, so that's what this does. Now the next step is to actually do the analysis. Once we have this scraped data, the next part of the solution is to actually bring it all into a make.com automation. So this is what I'm using here to automate this process, make.com, where I am, um, I am processing this data and using AI in order to generate um, a summary. Now let me walk you through what's happening here. So this automation gets triggered by a webhook. Um, what I did is I created a webhook and then I went to Phantom Buster under the setup here. Again, under advanced settings, there is an option to trigger an automation once this, um, once this Phantom, once this Phantom Buster automation finishes its, um, its execution. And here I'm specifying the webhook 
of my make.com scenario, which will be triggered as soon as this automation, this one here is done. So as soon as I have all the video data, uh, it will, this automation here will get triggered via the webhook. You can see it's the exact same webhook here. And the scenario will be executed. Now, once the scenario is executed, let me show you here if I go to my previous run. You can see um, if I go here. So this is the data that is coming from Phantom Buster. This is the data that is sent to the webhook. And you can see it includes a bunch of information about the actual um, the actual phantom that triggered it, uh, but most importantly, it contains the results. So here in this result object string here, this is all the video information that was scraped from the YouTube channels. So this is what I want to pass down to the scenario um, and analyze. Now, uh, the way this is done, if I go back to the scenario here, is I'm passing that results, result object uh, element to this parse JSON module because this is actually coming in a text format, in string format, basically. And I'm not able to work with text format and actually need to convert it into JSON so I can uh, map the information. You see here that I'm mapping the, the data um, in the subsequent modules. Therefore, I'm using this parse JSON and I created a data structure here which includes all the different elements that are part of this result object. Now, the way I did that, actually, a very easy way to do that is by, uh, I went to, I executed the scenario with the webhook, and then I went to the output here and I copied all this, uh, th this entire string that has the, um, the video information. And then what I did in my actual scenario here on the JSON module, I uh, created a new data structure and I selected generate and then I pasted that string. And what it does, this automatically looks at the structure of the string and it converts it into an actual uh, JSON data structure, right? So you don't need to manually sit and like uh, create like um, the custom data structure, which includes all the elements of the, of the input data. So that's what this does. It, can, it converts the string into JSON. And then by having the data in JSON, we can now map it into the subsequent modules. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using a text aggregator in order to bring all the data together because let me go back to the execution to show you what's happening once the JSON is parsed. There we go. So once the JSON is parsed, we have multiple bundles here that um, each contain the information of um, the, a, a video that was scraped from one of the channels, right? So these are all the videos that sc were scraped from the channels. Um, and what I wanna do is because I want to actually pass this information to, uh, to OpenAI, I first need to combine it together. I need to bring it all together uh, into one uh, piece of text so I can pass it to my OpenAI prompt. And for that, I'm using the text aggregator. Now, um, let me go back to the scenario here. So what, what I'm doing is I'm saying, I want to aggregate all the information that is coming from the, the JSON module here. So the JSON parse JSON module. Um, for each bundle that I'm generating with this module, I want to have a, a, a new row, right? So every video, I want to, I, I want the information of every, every video to be to be added on a new row. That's the row separator. And then for each video, I want to have uh, this structure. I wanna have the title, then I wanna have the video title, the views count, I wanna have the view count um, element from the, J from the JSON module, then the duration, I wanna have the duration element, channel URL, I wanna have this query element which contains the channel URL and then the video URL I want to I want to have the um, I want to have the value of the video URL element here and then at the end I want to have this uh, like dotted line here so just to just to show you just to show the AI that you know it's basically another separator um, 
so that's how I'm aggregating the, um, the video data. And if I go back to the execution of the scenario, you can see what it looks like. Uh, okay, so this, these, these are the input bundles. So these are all the video, this is all the video information split up. And then when it gets aggregated, you can see here in the output is just one long uh, string, one long piece of text where I have all the information that I need uh, for each video separated by this dotted line. Right, so this is what I'm passing. I'm then passing to the um, to the OpenAI module in order to generate the summary. Now, going back to the scenario here, if I open the OpenAI module, you can see that I'm doing a chat completion. I'm using the GPT uh, 4.0 model, and my system prompt has the following in in instruction. You're a content manager for my YouTube channel, and your job is to research the videos that other channels in my niche, uh, to research, yeah, to research the videos that other channels in my niche are posting and identify key topics. You will be provided with a list of the latest video titles from a list of channels. Then the task here is to output an HTML table, right? And I'm gonna explain later why it's an HTML table, with the following columns. I want the table to have the key topic, right? So each row in the table is a key topic that you identified by analyzing the video titles, right? This is the, this is the most important thing here, right? This is what um, I want the AI to actually figure out, is the topic, is the common topic um, between all the videos that these channels are posting, right? This is what's actually gonna help me with my research. So I want that to be the main column. And then I want the video titles with hyperlinked video URLs, right? So I want to actually be able to click on the title and open the actual video. Uh, the, title, uh, the titles of the videos that fall under this topic, right? So for each topic, I wanna have multiple titles. Uh, and then I'm saying each in a new line. So making sure that it follows, it, like it, it's a clean output where each title is on a new line and it's not like all uh, put together with commas and stuff. Um, this is just like formatting, you know, uh, formatting instructions. Uh, and then I also say again, like ensure that ensure that the video URL is hyperlinked on the video title text. Then I want to call them with the view counts, right? So the, the view count of each video title in the topic. Again, formatting instruction. Each one needs to be in a new line. Ensure that the video title uh, with the highest view count goes on the top of the list. So here is an instruction for sorting, right? I want to have the, the, the highest view uh, count video first on the list. Then I wanna have a, a column with the duration, so the duration of each video title in the topic. Um, and then finally, the channel URL. And then um, closing off, I'm saying that make sure that the video, make sure that the video titles are sorted based on view count. So again, repeating this instruction here because I noticed that sometimes it, it, it ignores it. Um, the video with the highest view count should be first on the list. So that's the system prompt. That's the instruction I'm giving to the system. And then in the user prompt, I'm providing um, the latest video titles, um, which is basically the output of my text aggregator, right? So uh, that, and then finally, I'm saying that I want the output to have a maximum of 3,000 tokens. Now, once the AI generates my, uh, my table, my report, what I wanna do next is send an email to myself that includes that table. So that's the reason I actually ask the AI to format the output in an HTML table, because first of all, uh, in order for, to, to generate a, a report that makes sense, that is readable, it needs to be in some sort of table. And generating an HTML table is actually pretty easy to do with, with, the, with AI. And then the easiest way to display that table is by sending an email, because an email can have um, HTML content, and then my email client will automatically convert the HTML uh, code into something visual that I can actually see, into an actual table, right? Which will look like this. Right, that's the HTML table. So that's what I'm doing in the last part of the automation. I'm sending an email to myself, and in the content of the email, I'm passing the output 
of the OpenAI module, which um, includes that HTML table. And then for the content type here, I'm selecting HTML. So uh, it knows that I'm sending HTML and the client will need to convert that HTML into something that I can uh, read. Now, in order to execute this automation, uh, all I have to do is switch it on, right? So this will instantly get triggered as soon as the Phantom Buster automation finishes its processing. So it will actually get triggered right after this one gets triggered. And as I mentioned earlier, I can select what, um, if I go to launch settings here, I can select what uh, launch frequency I want this automation to have. Um, for now, I'm keeping it once, right? Which means I can trigger it manually whenever I want. And that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna click here, uh, sorry. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna open it and then I'm gonna click launch, right? So you see it has begun uh, scraping the video information and in a few seconds, I'm gonna go here. Uh, this automation, we will see this automation automatically get triggered. So let's see, uh, let's go back here. Okay, so you see it's scraping, almost there. So now I'm gonna switch over to make so we can see this get triggered in real time. There we go. So the automation has now been triggered. We have received the, the video data from Phantom Buster and now the OpenAI module, you can see that is doing the, um, the processing. It's summarizing all the video information and I will soon receive an email. There we go, so an email has been sent. Now I'm gonna switch over to my email client. Now here's the uh, email that I'm getting from my automation. So we get a table that has uh, a key topic column. So this is these are the key topics that the AI has identified by analyzing the, the video titles of these channels. Um, for each video title, we also get the view count and you can see that the view counts are in order. Uh, starting from the from the highest one. Uh, we get the duration of each video, and then we also get the uh, channel username. Now, if I click on one of these videos, I actually get taken to the, to the video page. Uh, so I can actually view the video if I want to. But the cool thing is that I can now look at this summarized information and I can say, okay, so for the past week or so, um, the the hottest topics in the niche of AI have been AI use cases, GPT-40 content, Apple AI content, OpenAI updates, and Cloud 3.5 content. So if I'm also in the same niche, if I, if I have a YouTube channel in the same niche and I'm looking for ideas for trending content I can create, uh, this is a great place to start, right? Uh, and of course I have the links to all the videos so I can look at them. I also have the views so I can choose to look at the, um, you know, the, the, the videos with the highest views uh, and so on. So yeah, this is my solution for automating YouTube video research. If you have um, ideas on how this can be further improved or if you have any questions or ideas for future videos that you would like to see, just let me know in the comments below. With that said, thank you for watching and I'm gonna see you on the next one.